It's baseball season again, and that means that from sandlots to stadiums, the great face-off between pitcher and batter is back. And there are lots of pitches a pitcher can throw, but every pitcher is judged on their fastball. The fastball is the best pitch in the game of baseball. And that's because a heater thrown with precision is really, really hard to hit. Everyone has a fastball, and it's the pitch that gets thrown the most. The very fastest throws 105 miles per hour, and that can be havoc at the plate. Batting legend Ted Williams once said, hitting a fastball is the single most difficult thing to do in sports. And a home run. And he was probably right. Batters barely have time to see and swing at the ball before it reaches home plate. They should not be able to hit the damn ball, you see, is the interesting issue. And there are more and more guys throwing harder and faster. In 2008, only 18 pitchers were throwing triple-digit fastballs, and they collectively threw 196 of them. By 2017, there were 40 pitchers throwing that fast, and they together threw 1,017 fastballs at or above 100 miles per hour. But what if the fastball got even faster? Today, we're gonna look at why throwing and hitting a 110 mile per hour fastball is almost impossible. To find out what it takes, I threw my fastest fastball with a scientist who's been studying pitching for decades. I tried hitting a former big leaguer's pitch and stepped into the virtual world to bat against a superhuman pitching avatar. Nope. <laughs> Let's start with the pitch. Baseball fans have long been thrilled by the pure speed of the fastball. Bob Feller, pitcher for the Cleveland Indians, takes time off to demonstrate his cannonball delivery. Before radar guns, Army ordnance equipment had to be brought in to measure pitch speed. Rockets along at a world record speed of 98 and 6 tenths miles. Legends like Bob Feller and Nolan Ryan threw incredible fastballs that left batters reeling. Today's Marvels of the Mound also sling serious speed. At the top of the radar gun is Yankees relief pitcher Eraldis Chapman, who was once clocked throwing a stunning 105 mile per hour fastball. He pitches an average of 101 miles per hour, and last year threw over 345 triple digit fastballs. All right, so what does it actually take to throw a ball that fast? I talked to Glenn Fleissig, one of the world's leading authorities on pitch mechanics. So do we have any sense of, of what is distinguishing people who have a range that peaks out? at 100 miles plus. Is there something different about them physiologically, proportionally, height-wise? Yeah, that's, -wise? that's one of the cool things about baseball. The answer is no. They tend to be tall. There are some guys who are six feet who are throwing faster than the guys who are six foot ten. Fleissig uses motion capture software to map and correct throwing mechanics. But that doesn't mean just anyone can hurl heat. You and I do everything right, we're not going to throw 100 miles per hour. Maybe your range is you're going to throw between 70 and 80 miles per hour and someone else's range is that they're going to be throw between 90 and 100. All we could do with proper mechanics is get you to the top of your range. So I asked Fleissig, who works with pitchers from Little League all the way up through the majors, to look at my mechanics. The energy has now gone up your body. The arm is in the cockpit position. What I see here is, is your arm does not have enough what we call external rotation at the shoulder, meaning if I drew a, a vertical line up your trunk, I would want your forearm to be perpendicular to that, to make a, an L shape. So I'd want your hand to be much lower, maybe a foot lower, so that your arm is uh, cocked back more. Even with Glenn's advice, I was only throwing about half the speed of the pros. So what is the outer limit in terms of velocity leaving the hand of today's pitchers? The top pitchers have always been about 100 miles per hour, and uh, I think that is the limit, 100, 105 miles per hour. I think the thing that could change is the average velocity could go up because more guys can optimize and maximize themselves and get to that limit. But, Fleissig says, there's been a price for such speed. There are more injuries, and part of the problem is that more pitchers are throwing at top velocity and constantly throwing at top velocity, and the body can only take so much. He and his colleagues measured the force required to actually rupture elbow ligaments. Turns out, it's actually the same force that a pitcher puts through his arm when throwing at top speed. Every time you go back and forward, it's about 100 newton meters here and here. 100 newton meters is the equivalent of holding five 12 pound bowling balls. <laughs> so imagine I hung 60 pounds from your hand, but that's about the equivalent of what's happening on your elbow or shoulder at that instant. That force makes for tiny tears in the ligaments, and over time, 
A pitcher who throws too hard too often is basically throwing his arm off. Fleissig says that fastball mania has led to a jump in Tommy John procedures. That's the surgery to repair torn ligaments in the elbow. He says that is the limiting factor for fastball speed. Yeah, I know it would be very exciting to see the limits break, like for other sports where the ceiling keeps going up, up. I think we're at the ceiling that the ligaments and tendons can't take it. So why do pitchers even bother throwing that hard? Because a well-placed fastball is the gold standard for striking out batters. To understand what a batter is up against, you have to look at this incredibly short period of time that they have to decide if a ball is even worth swinging at. It's 60 feet, 6 inches from the pitcher's mound to home plate, but the actual distance is shorter. The pitcher releases the ball about 55 feet from the plate, and a fastball moving 100 miles per hour takes about 4 tenths of a second to make that trip. And here's the thing. It takes 50 milliseconds for the eye and brain to even register the pitch another 150 milliseconds to swing the bat. That leaves just a split second for the batter to decide if the pitch is worth swinging at. The batter has to pretty much make his decision within 200 milliseconds. That's why some people have argued batters should not be able to do it. I can tell you that it is incredibly difficult. That curved a little bit. I went to Villanova University where Kevin Mulvey, who was the baseball coach there and a former pro pitcher himself, smoked a few fastballs past me. I made contact twice. I was just concentrating on keeping the ball away from him. I didn't want to hit you. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want to come inside. I didn't want to get anywhere near you. Which I appreciated. He was throwing in the 80s and was incredibly consistent. But here at Villanova, they've got a tireless pitcher who can throw everything from high school speeds right up to the truly impossible. There. Nailed it. So I am inside the cave at Villanova. And right now, it's a virtual batter's box inside a virtual stadium, and I'm hitting against a virtual pitcher who can throw any style of pitch we want. He can throw a changeup, he can throw a fastball, he can throw a curveball or a slider. He can even do impossible pitches. But no actual bats allowed. This screen alone costs $50,000. Engineer Mark Jupina created the system by inputting actual MLB pitch data. So what batters see is a real pitch delivered virtually. What we're doing here as much as we can is develop a training tool and then we're also looking at to add in EEG sensors to measure focus level, eye trackers to properly see how well the eye is moving with, with the ball. We're developing something not only to help the baseball team, but we're getting other scientists and engineers involved in this, this project. Japina can do things like freeze the ball midair and have batters identify the pitch. It's going to be high. Yeah, high and inside. It's harder than it sounds, but some of Villanova's players took right to it. Curveball, ball. I, was, I wasn't uh, right all the time, but it was definitely very beneficial to try to pick up and really focus in on arm recognition and where the slot of the ball's coming out. Strike, fastball. And we can even show you what realistically a 120 mile an hour fastball would look like. I tried one of those. Nope. <laughs> 121, 121 miles per hour. For psychologist Jerry Long, the cave batting simulator could answer questions about our ability to track moving objects. Yeah. 121 miles per hour. Good grief. You could hit that? Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, is it really true that you've got to keep your eye on the ball to hit it? What if the ball disappeared after 200 milliseconds? The presence of the ball should almost be unnecessary. Is that true? I don't know the answer to that. I'd love to find that out. I also tried one of Jupina's other creations, a hacked Oculus Rift that he's rigged so a player can swing for the virtual fences. God, the timing is completely different. All right, this is a fastball moving at 111 miles per hour. Fifth or sixth time is the charm. Hey, finally, right? Yeah. Yes, all right, finally. So on the sixth or seventh attempt, knowing exactly when and where this ball is coming, standing way in the back of the batter's box so that my sweet spot is perfectly aligned with the incoming trajectory of this pitch, I was able to make contact with a 111 mile per hour, impossibly fast fastball. So will we ever see a pitch like that in real life? Probably not. But virtual reality could help us better understand how batters track and connect with the ball. Because what they're doing now is already almost impossible.